Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today I want to talk about SciScope, which is a free analyzer plugin uh, specifically made to analyze um, kick and bass and Psytrance. trends. And I want to show you how I set it up personally inside my um, template and um, some of the cool tricks you can do with that. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so here's a project that I'm working on. Um, I'm going to play you the kick and bass. As you can see, I've turned off everything that isn't kick and bass. Also the old uh, baseline that I started this project out with. Um, it sounds like this. It's a pretty nice kick and bass sound, I would say. I really like how the, especially the bass turned out. The kick is more just like a sample with um, a filter on it. So that's not really that special. Um, but I mainly want to focus on the bass here and I mainly want to focus on how I used SciScope um, to get from uh, from this to this. Um, so yeah, let's get into that. Um, first I want to quickly show off how I do my routing here. Um, so what I've done basically, um, I think you can do this with maximum uh, four tracks, theoretically. Uh, what I've done is I've put a group here, and um, this is where SciScope is. This is the plugin. As you can see, it just opens up and it has a um, analyzer which is locked to the timing. Um, so you can see if I play this, the timing changes. Um, it's still in very much in a uh, beta stage and it's the, the very first or the second version here as you can see 1.0.01 .01, very early in development and you can see there's some times where the click kind of shows up differently both for the kick and the bass um, so that might be like a little bug or something or um, th the analyzer is maybe too big or too small for the screen I don't know what exactly what it is um, but it's it's still a very useful plugin and um, this is especially useful because it allows you to zoom in and stuff like that and you can zoom in you can scroll around and reanalyze it and it's um it's currently on layer mode and i'll explain how you can set this up in a little bit but you can also see the summing mode and this is very powerful it will show you how your kick and bass is going to end up uh, once they're summed together um, so once the two waveforms are, are added up and that's really powerful to be able to see that and to, to play around with that and of course also the the layered mode here is also very powerful to kind of see where everything is inside your track and stuff like that um, so let's actually go over how this is set up um, so I have three groups that are interesting here I have the current bass patch here which consists of two groups one um, for the offbeat and one for the onbeat if you've seen me produce you know that I do this um, so the onbeat one, I can remove the sub there inside Serum, inside the patch itself. Um, so I don't have any filtering and therefore um, minimize the face problems that I have. And um, yeah, I'm, I'll go over all of this processing in a little bit. Because this is basically my standard base patch with a few modifications which I wanted to quickly show off. Uh, there are some cool tricks in there uh, which you can apply to your own base as well. Uh, so that's the first group here. Then we have the my standard bass patch, which is my starting point anytime I start uh, producing something. And then finally here we have a kick. Now this is a normal kick sample. I do believe I did uh, a little bit of EQing and then I froze it so I could, uh, you know, add the fades to it and stuff like that. And I wouldn't have any trouble uh, with like the, the thing overlapping with my bass line itself. Um, so those are the three tracks that we would like to see inside the analyzer. Um, so what I've done is I've basically created three tracks up here. You have a kick track, a bass track, and the bass all track. And these all take inputs from the individual tracks here, this one and this one. You can see that down here. And they're set to input mode, and then they're routed to the group, um, but not in the, the normal way. Normally, when you route to the group, it's like this. And it will just send the audio to here inside the, the plugin, which you can also do. And that's also that will also show up. But what I've done is I've set these to uh, this size scope, which allows me to uh, put it into one of the three sidechain inputs. 
Um, so potentially what I could do is now also send audio to this group directly without going through the sidechain. Um, so I could have a fourth different color um, come up. But basically the reason why we're doing this and, and setting them up with a sidechain input and stuff like that is because as you can see, we have three different sidechain inputs and therefore this plugin will actually show the different colors uh, for the sidechain. I can show you that if I also turn off or, or turn on the other older base here, you should be able to see a third color pop up. As you can see, there's now also a purple one. Um, so yeah, now that's the basic setup of me that I use. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit laggy still. Um, I tried to drag it there and now I'm trying to close it and it also takes a little bit of time. Uh, again, this is very much in the, the very early stages of development. And um, yeah, but now I kind of want to show you what I did with this analyzer in terms of how I process them, uh, how I process my base and stuff like that. Um, so I'm actually going to open this back up and I will drag it up here uh, so we can easily see. Uh, most of the processing actually happens on the individual patches. So this one is very clean. As you can see, it's just my standard base patch with um, the plugin for uh, subfilter removed. Um, because this doesn't have a, has a sub, um, it does not need the, the subfilter plugin. And I started off doing that for the same uh, here as well. I basically removed the, the, the subfilter here because I wanted to try to kind of get a, a solid sub sound without using subfilter. Because subfilter tends to introduce a lot of phase problems. Um, it, the, the, the post stringing from subfilter is very, very long, especially after it goes through the, the compressor and the saturator and everything as well. Um, so yeah, this, this, this first part is basically my standard baseline patch, which I've shown on both on stream as well as on this channel before. Um, but then here it gets interesting. The very first thing I did um, is I wanted a little bit more grit and a little bit more uh, harmonic content to listen to. Um, so I replaced the limiter with a saturator on soft clip mode, which is also basically limiting the sound, but also introducing a few more harmonics into it and a little bit more warmth, so to say. And then here, this is a trick I've been doing uh, for a little bit now. But basically what this is, is it a, a splitter. So we have this multiband dynamics here. And if I open it up, you can see it's not really doing anything uh, in terms of processing. You can see the, the thing here is turned off as well as for this one. Um, but you can see that we are soloing the lower band here. And then on the other side, we're soloing the high band. And um, therefore, only the high frequencies go through here and the low frequencies go through this thing. And what I've done there is um, before we go through the, uh, before, we, before we go through that splitter thing, um, we're using the stereo spread here. And this will allow me to, to use the entire signal to kind of stereoize it. And then um, we'll just take the high frequencies from that. So that makes it sound a little bit better than if I were to do it the other way around. Um, otherwise, I could just use this and just have it on my chain. But the, the whole rack here is so that I can stereoize the whole uh, signal and then just take the high end. Um, I personally thought that sounded a little bit better. And yeah, so that's for a few of the tricks I've done. Um, of course, another one is the, the LFO tool, having a little dip at the end here to remove any phase issues that I might have. And um, this thing here as well for some timing. I also use another LFO tool, kind of like a compressor almost. Um, this is set to 16th notes. So this will kind of shape um, the sustain of our notes. And this gave it just a little bit more click and attack. Um, so that's another trick you can use. I mainly kind of wanted to show off SciScope as I think it's a really neat plugin. And I uh, I have seen it before on uh, Oli Music's channel. I'm sure you know who he is. I'll leave a link to um, his video as well as to this plugin uh, for you guys to download. Um, but that's going to be it for today. Um, it's a little bit of a less organized video. There's a few things I kind of wanted to show you and I decided to pack them all into one. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end it today. If you enjoyed today's video, then leave a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.